In this lecture, we're going to look at traditional formatting of a manuscript. And here, let me bring back up our original sample of Not Long After Midnight with our three short stories in it. Now, uh, one of the things I don't point out enough, I think, and I'm going to point it out right away, is this navigation pane over to the left. Let's get rid of it by clicking X on it. And I'm going to show you how I lay out my word screen to begin with. So the first thing that I like is I like to go to view. And the thing that I like is to have my text go a full page width. I don't want to see multiple pages. I don't want to see one page where it makes it skinny and I've got all this white space. I want to see it stretch the whole page width. So I go page width. 100% doesn't even do it. That comes in a little bit. So I go to full page width here under view on the menu. This is in Windows 2016. The next thing that I do is I like to be able to navigate to my head ones. That's why head ones are so important. They provide navigation points. Actually head twos through threes through six, whatever you want to do. They give you a hierarchy of navigation points. And the way to see that is under view as well. You turn on, you click on the navigation pane. And what this does is it shows you the head ones in this case in my document. And when I click on them, I jump directly to the head one. So it's a really neat outlining, highlighting, navigation, just it's it's just the neatest thing. So two things, go to your view menu, pick page width for what you're viewing. And I like it page width because my eyes are failing. Then I like to turn on the navigation pane to take up just a little bit of that width room. I, don't, I mean, I don't need it this large. This large is fine enough. And this is what I'm used to working in. Now, let's begin formatting this document. And the first thing that I do is I look for extra white space and invalid characters and I translate stuff. And I do that by going to home. That's interesting, this isn't on view. And here I click this little paragraph symbol actually. This is the paragraph symbol. And if I click it, right now it's gray. Now it's not grayed, so I'm not seeing the paragraph symbols. If you thought, wow, his document looks a little strange, it's because I get used to seeing the paragraph symbols now I work so much with them. So here's what a normal document looks like, right? No, no strange formatting. And here this starts on a new page. Okay. And I'm going to go back to death sentence. And then I'm going to turn on. It's called show hide paragraphs. And it'll show all, all the symbols. So here we get to see this is a new page symbol. This is a space symbol, the little dot, and this is a paragraph symbol. So here's two paragraphs, here's spaces between the words. You get to see all the invalid spaces, like here's some extra space here. Maybe I don't want two spaces ending at the end. That might create a page break on a Kindle document that I wouldn't like. So I keep going, yeah, this extra space is fine and... A quick way to do it is just go to the finger and then back up and see what we got here. Oh, we've got two more, so let's go here. And I'll back up a couple to get rid of those extra spaces. And then we'll go to the very end of the document, after the finger, and we're good there. So we've gotten rid of all the extra spaces. Now, the other thing that I like to do is translate some stuff. Now, I can see in here quite easily that I don't have five spaces for new paragraphs, so I don't have to translate that. But what about M dashes? You type them as dash dash in Word, and sometimes they turn into an M dash and sometimes they don't. So what I like to do is come to replace and say, translate a dash dash to a more special character m dash so translate any dash dashes you find to an m dash there it's got my replacement set up i say replace all not find next 
and it made one replacement. So there was one invalid occurrence of a hyphen hyphen instead of an M dash. I'm glad I checked for that. Next, let's check for, let's replace all, we don't want any tabs in this document. For some reason, tabs don't work well with E documents. So we're gonna replace special character, tab character, which is a caret T if you wanted to type it, with nothing. So we'll get rid of the replace with and we'll say replace all. Zero replacement. So we had no indentation that would have gone wonky in an ebook. Um, the other popular translations are translate five spaces to none so that you can use styles for indentation instead of five spaces and so on. So be sure to do this even if you use Kindle Create to format your document. You want to get rid of the wonky characters and the bad spaces that are going to create strange page breaks and stuff like that. We now have a very clean document. And one of the things I forgot to do is I'm going to, okay, first of all, I'm going to save this because I've cleaned it up. And then I'm going to save as not long after midnight. And I'm going to call this traditional. There we go. So we have, this is the traditional formatting of the document. So we have our sections completely clean. Now, a way to really make things clean, and I'm going to show you this because there's very little formatting, right? We've got three head level ones here as far as style. And then the rest is all normal body stuff. So what you can do to really, this is this is the nuclear bomb of formatting. This is, there's, there's no more formatting than this, is that you go to home and you say select all. That's gonna select everything in your document. And then you come up here and you click on normal. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna make everything in your document normal. You are now, down at whatever your normal configuration is. And remember to configure normal here, we've got normal as it's a five space indent and it's no spaces in between. It looks like it's probably Times New Roman 12 and uh, normal single spacing. Let's go and check that out. I go to normal, I, but just by rotating over it, if I click on it, that makes whatever is selected normal. If I just hover over it, not rotate, and then I right click, I can modify normal. Oh, and in this case, I have something non-normal. Okay, let's, let's select something that is normal. And I'll modify normal. And notice, yeah, it's times New Roman 12 pitch, non-bold or underscored or italic, a single spaced, left justified. And if I go to format paragraph, I can see that there are no spaces before or after the line, but it's got this first line. Rather than having none or hanging, set to 0.33 inches, which is what gives it that indent. Now, if instead of the indent, let's configure it to be normal. Yeah, I like the font and all that. I always keep that the same. But then I go to paragraph, and let's put... Before 12, after 12, so we've got a blank line before and after. And let's take first line and let's make it none. And then we'll say okay, and we'll apply. Now notice what we've got. Everything is left justified and there's a blank line between our paragraphs. So you get to choose as far as how you'd like to format your document. Would you like the left justified with the blank line? Or if I come back to normal and I right click now, modify, format paragraph, zero, whoops, went the wrong way. Zero points between first line point Three, three. Point 0.5 is just a little too much, so I, I have to go with 0.33. And there you go. Now, 
The next thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to configure F1s and these or heading ones. And that's about all that we use is heading ones and normal, at least me. So if I right click on heading one, we'll look at how that's different. It's uh, two points higher. So rather than being 12 point, it's 14 point and it's bold. OK, the other thing, if I go into format paragraph, it has special set to none, so it doesn't have that indent. Now, the other thing that it doesn't have that I might add is saying after add 12 points of space. That way I don't have to have this blank line. And I'll show you how that works with and without. Now, the other thing that this has that's significant is if I go to the so you've got two tabs here on paragraph formatting. You've got indents and spacing, and you've got line and page breaks. Here, it's got a page break enabled before a head one. So that ensures that it always occurs on a brand new page. And if I go to here and I say, give it a head one, we're on a brand new page now. But look, it's got some funky spacing now. That's because I added spacing, and I no longer need this blank space. So let's get rid of this blank space, and now it shows up because I just configured it as a head one. Whoop, there we go. This is a head one. You can see because that highlights. Notice I click on a paragraph and it's just normal. I click on a head one and it kind of highlights in a, a gray box that it's a head one. Now here it also shows up because it's a head one in my navigation pane. Now unfortunately, because I nuked my document and I gave it all what here's the kiss <laughs> because I removed all formatting I don't know where the next head one is so I have to go here to find the kiss and then notice that it has a little extra white space because I put some space after and now the kiss appears in the navigation pane and then I'm going to go down to the finger. Can, am I going to be able to find it is the big question. That's why you need some kind of formatting here some way. There's the finger. So we go here, we make that a head one, and we get rid of the extra space after it. And there we go. So that would be the next step is to format how you want your head ones and your normals to look and then apply that to everything. Now I went and nuked the document because it already had head ones formatted in it and I thought that was kind of cheating. So that would be the next step. We have a very clean document right now formatted with head ones and normals. Now the next thing I'm going to do is insert a title page. 